Genesis 1.26. What does that say? Here it is. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Hmm. You see anything there? Someone will say, well, you need to look a little closer, because it says here, God said, and then when God said, he says, let us, us. there you go, that's a unity of three co-eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the idea. Well, let's see, is the verse actually saying that? Why is God saying, let us? Obviously, God must be speaking to someone else. Now, the question is, who is he speaking to? How many is he speaking to? The idea of the Trinity would say, well, he's speaking to how many? Another two, making a total of three, us. And these three actually are united. They make up the, the one God. Well, who was he talking to? Very simply, we can know who he's talking to or how many when we look at the subject of the conversation. Because God's saying, let us make who? Man in our image. And so when God created man in his image, how many were created? Adam and then Eve. Eve. How many? Two. Two. So how many was God speaking to? Another person. Two individuals. The father was speaking to his son. He said, listen, let's make man in our image. So how many did they make? Two. Simple enough, right? So the idea is, because God said us, the idea is, well, there must be three. Well, let me tell you something. Two does not prove three. If there were three, then God would have created three human beings. Was that possible for God to do? Yes. Not hard, right? No, he created two. In the image and likeness of the Father and Son. That's why God said there, let us.